Um, Christian or Bong, as he's known, uh, Ramillo has been a cultural activist for more than 30 years, both in the Philippines where he was born and since migrating to Australia in 1986. He has worked in regional Australia for 20 years as a multicultural arts officer for the NT government, an independent community artist, a computer program and system administrator. He's currently executive officer of Darwin Community Arts and manages uh, Telecentro, which is a community-based internet access centre, and Frontline, which is the project that we support him for. And he's going to tell us about the people involved in the project. Thanks, Paul. Hi, good morning. Darwin Community Arts uh, is a grassroots arts development organization um, that's based in a neighborhood. And we're producing as well as a service organization, which means we make things and we work with communities to make things. Uh, it used to be called Brown Smart Community Arts, uh, Arts, which was set up in the mid 70s, I think soon after or just before Cyclone Crazy crashed the town. Um, so it's one of the oldest community arts organizations in, in the country. Um, this is what we, we try to do. Basically, we try to provide spaces, facilities, tools, opportunities for communities to make art and build culture. By 2006, um, people were asking about um, the role or the relevance of Brown Smart. In the past, it's been host and has um, assisted in spawning such organizations as Trax Dance Collective, our premier dance company um, in the uh, NT, also Corrugated Iron Youth Arts, and even the NT Writers Center. But by 2006 or even earlier, um, Brown Smart itself and some of the funding bodies and the arts sector we're asking, what is it there for, really? It can't keep incubating and spawning organizations. So, um, Brown Smart at the time decided, well, it's time for a, a big change uh, to become relevant to the changing situation. So we decided on doing two things. Um, basically, one is to stop managing Brown Smart, which is a beautiful <coughs> heritage building turned into a theater, which Brown Smart Community Arts manage on behalf of the trustees for about 33 years, and secondly, let's go into um, the neighborhoods and become a neighborhood-based grassroots arts organization. So it was basically, I think at the time, it was more about the arts community than community arts. So we said we should get back to community arts and, and go to the most notorious suburb in Darwin, which is Malak, because that's where communities are. That's what we did. Part of that as well as trying to be, uh, I guess, more relevant in terms of um, contemporary uh, and, and what people are getting used with, young people especially with new technologies and, and new media and social media. So that was the other thing we wanted to try. One of the first initiatives was setting up a telecenter with Malak in the northern suburbs in um, basically dead shopping center, lots of vacant shops. So uh, we got um, a few dozen computers, the university gave us 30, and old ones, but they still work. We installed Ubuntu Linux on them and set up about 15, 12 or 15 computers and, and um, opened a shop, provide free internet access to the neighborhood. Lots of um, the, the users were young people, including um, young indigenous men and young African men. At the time, that was a, one of our um, key target um, constituencies because they were bashing each other up. Or there was a lot of tension between these two groups in the northern suburbs and in Darwin. So when one of the interesting things was a lot of these young men, some of, like the Malak boys, which is our local gang, would go in there watching fights on YouTube. So we were a bit concerned that we thought that's probably better than them having fights in the car park. <laughs> the next um, project we did was uh, one funded by Australia Council for the Arts Community Partnerships called Armalac. It was a series of workshops in digital media, again targeting specifically um, young indigenous men and young 
African men, but also um, anyone who lived in the neighborhood. So it was blogging and digital imaging and many other things. Again, most of the activities were in the telecentro. Then um, last year, I think it was last year, we, we received um, a grant from Australia Council and Australian Human Rights Commission to do a locative media project focusing on the relationship of people and place, uh, specifically where we are in the northern suburbs and again trying to build on our previous work with various communities including the indigenous and African communities. My phone's telling me I have two minutes left. Um, this is our rappers in, in Malak. We started working with them in the digital media workshops. And they, we worked with them for about nearly 18 months now separately with the young indigenous rappers and the young African rappers. And only just a few weeks ago did they come together to start writing. Um, stuff together. It's been a long process. We're hoping the stuff they make will be the soundtrack to Frontline, to the, our other activities uh, in Darwin. We've gone into digital uh, graffiti in a big way because we want to do um, change public places even if temporarily. So laser tag is uh, something we, we learned from the graffiti research lab. Um, quite popular. Some users, when we did it recently, thought we had a magic laser pointer because they couldn't see the other gear that we were using. They thought that this laser would actually write on walls without anything else. We didn't disabuse them of that. <laughs> Let's throw this is another thing we picked up from Graffiti Research Lab. Um, they are LEDs or lights with batteries and magnets with roll metal surfaces. That's a bit um, very popular for young kids who try and take them home rather than throw them on the wall. The more recent um, tool we developed was Tag Tool, which we used last night on the side of the town hall. It's a live drawing and animation program. Um, we did some calligraphy or writing on the wall uh, recently at Palmerston, where we had a, a Somali man um, writing. Um, the words to a song he was singing, or recorded song, and we had Nepali, Burmese, and Karen, uh, or might be Kareni people there. One of the things we're looking at is um, Second Life, or in particular Open Sim, which is the open source version of Second Life. So that's our very beautiful virtual office and virtual studio. If you come to Malak, you'll see how different it is. Uh, one of the things we will start very soon is working with Patsy and Arthur Kinoe of uh, their Kamor artists. Um, their country has been mistakenly allocated to another group, the Malak Malak, after which our suburb is named. So uh, one of the things they want to do to recover ownership of their country is build a virtual country in uh, Open Sim or Second Life. <coughs> Sid uh, was a fridge we made with my fellow geeks for the recently concluded fridge festival. We, we had um, face detection, uh, social media, QR codes, and other things in the fridge. Uh, the things I went to Aqua Lab, thank you, Australia Council, for sending me there. That was wonderful. Uh, we also um, hosted Mervyn Jarman from Jamaica. Um, we're planning to do an open source version of his um, high street lab. Sorry. Then that's it, I think. That's how you get in touch with me.